Okay, first order of business are the select board minutes for April 17th and April 24th. I would entertain a motion to accept those. I will move the minutes of April 17th and the 24th. A second? No second. Thank you, Jim. Uh, any discussion? Uh, correction. Um, Two April 17th months. Yeah. Yeah. That actually is not necessarily a correction, as well. Yeah. Uh, acknowledgement, acknowledgement of a mistake. Yeah. I, when I quoted the statute, temporary executive session, yeah. I quoted the incorrect statute. Does that mean um, the one I should have quoted is the one that's actually documented here and was on the agenda? And that was to discuss attorney client communications. I accidentally quoted the Employee evaluation statute. So just want to pick up. Okay. Yes, it was the twenty four. Okay. Uh, Jim, your uh, your business rules and procedure. Um, if I read this correctly, the, the table for the motion to accept as well as we did not talk about the amendment as well. Oh, well, I think we discussed the amendment yeah. the table. Yeah. Okay, but we, we just wanted to make sure that we got the whole thing to address tonight. Any other comments? Well, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, Next item of business are the orders where they pass payable up through May 1st. The motion to accept the orders up to May 1st. Um, and second. Second. Thank you, then. Uh, any discussion? <clears throat> Is uh, Wade House on? We pay for fertilizer. So we pay half and our cost of land pays half. Ours are 64 cents. I'm sorry, 60 40, right? 60 40. So we're paying 60%, our company's paying 40%. So the bill is attached over $2,000. I don't want to get picky on this, but was there a soil test done to know what an MMC did we have? <laughs> Well, I don't know that I, it's the field over by the parking lot. Right? Yeah. He does it every year. The question, yeah, no, the question that was brought up to me was if he's getting the pay off it to sell, why are we paying for the fertilizer? I don't know that I answer, Clyde. There must be some sort of agreement somewhere. It must be. It's been that way since I've been here. We've had the, we've had the, I had the discussion before about it, and I do not know the true answer on that. So yes, it's probably what previous administrations would allow. We're very happy to see the field used that way, um, but I also have had the same question. Morgan, what is the payment to um, for the fuel point of perception? I'm not familiar with who that entity GPI. Um, oh, they're engineers. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I, I submitted the engineer's bill and the two rivers bill um, for the barn we paid. So that money will come back to the town. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? All favor with the second the invoices up to May 1st, say aye. Uh, uh, motion passes. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Here we are moving on to public comments. Are there any public comments? I have some. 
Uh, first, I would like to thank the Energy Energy Committee for organizing the Department of Earth Day event. Um, I thought it was well attended, and um, I learned some things. And, um, so thank you for everything, everyone that put uh, work into it. Second item, um, <laughs> It was brought to my attention that during the recent town meeting, when uh, we, the select board, thanked town volunteers and town employees, that I missed thanking the staff at the library. Uh, it was not my intention to do so, and I apologize for not including the library staff. Um, over the years, I've developed a theory that one can tell a lot about a town by their library. Um, when I look at our town library, I see an active community building, um, a library staff that's eager to help people. A library staff and with the library board of trustees are moving. <laughs> Let's see, Sarah, but Dan Nelson is here. Um, Dan, I wonder if you could come forward and let the committee like say a few words. Um, sure, my name's Dan Nelson. Um, I've been in Carlin since uh, 2014. And uh, I saw the posting on the community listserv uh, a few weeks ago, looking for volunteers to ask to be considered to serve on the Connecticut River Joint Commissions. Um, I think you've got the statement that I wrote about my interest and in background. It's something I'm pretty passionate about. Um, the only thing I'd add to what I wrote is, um, you know, I recognize. Um, uh, the importance of consulting closely, communicating frequently with the Conservation Commission, because I think the roles of both groups overlap quite a bit, certainly uh, reporting back to you. And then an area of uh, personal interest you know, that I think relates to the mission of the Joint Commissions is um, uh, kind of appropriate recreational access to riverfront. You know, it's a great asset for a community to be located on a river. Um, we've got uh, some access, but um, be nice to, to over time think about what would be appropriate if, if it made sense to for there to be more access or improved access. Um, any questions for them? I think we're not hazard that we just recently built a canoe. Uh, built a couple kayaks, yeah. <laughs> COVID project. Okay. okay. Um, if there are no questions, um, again, in the executive session tonight, we'll discuss the two candidates, yourself and yeah. Sarah, and um, great. Take, take an action. Great, yeah. thank you. And I should just say, I think it's great that two candidates. Um, to me, the most important thing is that the town's well represented on the commission, so I'd be delighted with whichever way you go. Okay, thank Today. you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Um, should I jump in now? Sorry, this is Sarah Wood. Oh, Sarah, yes. Sarah, please. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I meant to attend in person, but I wasn't able to. Um, 
I am Sarah Wood and I'm on the Heartland Conservation Commission. And um, I have put my name forward too for the Joint Commission. I um, have a long background in kind of working um, on governance issues, kind of at the national, subnational, kind of state level. Um, on a variety of different kind of protection and conservation issues. Um, I currently serve on the Heartland Conservation Commission. And my interest with this was just to make sure that we had good representation because I think that, you know, stakeholder, it's a really big watershed area. Um, joint commissions are complicated. I think it's really important for the Upper Valley to have good representation um, for the different areas that the watershed management kind of needs and protection issues have been getting more complicated um, bioregionally and across state lines. And I just wanted to make sure there was really good representation. Um, that being said, I definitely would like my name in. However, <laughs> um, I think it's also good for the town to get lots of people engaged in these issues. And so I don't need to serve on the Heartland Conservation Commission and the Connecticut. You know, as long as I feel like there's good representation, I think we're happy. And so I definitely want to keep my name in. But just so the select board knows, um, you know, I do feel like it's really good for the, the town to have more people engaged in these kind of issues. I'm just really, I'm thankful that, you know, we have somebody else stepping up as well. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. <laughs> any questions for Sarah? Sarah, thank you for uh, throwing your uh, name into the for this. And also thank you for serving on the Conservation Commission. I, and I think you said it very well in your opening remarks. Um, um, it's good to have volunteers in town, and, and I appreciate your work in this area. Okay. Um, thank you again, and Sarah, we're going to move on to the next agenda. Um, as folks know, we recently um, looked at the work of the schoolhouse um, as, as someone approached the town to, to use the schoolhouse as a woodworking shop. Um, for various reasons, we, we um, withdrew from that discussion. Um, and uh, yeah. a few people have approached uh, Martin to. Um, to, with the concept of creating a committee to look at how to use the North Hartland schoolhouse, um, um, which is currently heated in electricity, but, but vacant. Um, Marielle, do you want to come forward and discuss? Uh, um, um, hi, Ariel Arwen. Uh, let's see. So it just seemed a natural progression since you considered that um, uh, following Stacy's comments with her familiarity of the use of the park from the kids. And uh, so just wondering going forward if it would make sense to have a committee with people from Heartland and some select board representation. So um, we went to see it a couple of weeks ago and they were repairing some glass. Martin said I could come and I invited a couple other Heartland, North Heartland friends, uh, Rebecca Gordon, who's I think chair of the planning commission right now and Craig Smith. And, uh, so, you know, tossing and around ideas, Jim was there that day. So that's about it. I mean, I'm not even a North Heartlander, Stacy's here. Um, but I said to Martin that I, I would speak to it because it just seemed like a natural thing to think about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thoughts and comments? Mm -hmm. well, I, mean, just, I have a lot of curiosity with Martin just to get my first book. He had not seen the building before. And to be put into use of public use mm -hmm. would take some renovation. And probably ADA access. I mean, so the, you know, the committee might not be a bad idea. At least you could put money into it and do something with it, right? You could sell it, use the money to do something else for North Ireland, um, or just let it kind of decay into the ground, which is what it's doing now. 
So whatever the ideas are, I mean, if the, if the committee got together, I think you'd have to come up with ideas and cost proposals um, to try to make sense of it. But I mean, you know, just looking at it, you know, needs outside rehab, needs new windows, needs inside rehab, needs ADA access. The roofing material looks pretty good. What's well, underneath it? No idea. Uh, bathrooms will need to be redone. Yeah, I'm pretty sure really put that whole thing to, to good use. Then another option is to raise it and make a pavilion there, like yeah. a shelter. Yeah, so there's a lot of different. Yeah. And if it was sold, the land would have to be partitioned off, right? Right. Yeah. 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 So anyway, I'll go sit down. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, Ariel, have you thought at all about um, committee membership and roughly time period that you would want to spend on this, assuming you would be on the committee? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I just, I sent an email to Stacy and Kim Gibbs. She organized a community party there two summers ago, and then it had to get canceled because of COVID. And I wrote Anna Mejia and Craig and Rebecca. So I just wanted a few people in North Heartland to know mm -hmm. that this was happening tonight. And, um, you know, as far as how many people would be on it, I think it'd be great if we had a bunch, but who knows how many will. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you guys want to delineate about how big a committee would make sense. And your question about time, time, how long the committee would take to yeah. evaluate different things? Yeah. Um, great question. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I see it as um, your involvement being pretty major because this is, uh, you know, something that's been there and it's been heated minimally for all these years and it makes sense to think about it. Okay. So I don't know. No, maybe do you want to talk about it, Stacey? Can I? <laughs> Thanks, sir. Thanks, uh, um, thanks Ariel. Uh, I, I did get Stacy Bradley. Uh, I did get Ariel's email. I just unfortunately haven't had time to respond back to her. Um, you know, I think uh, some kind of a commission, uh, a committee would probably be a good idea. Um, having been, it's going to take probably a few months to sort of flesh out, you know, um, and get specific cost ideas, I would imagine. Having been on ARPA, this is sort of just one specific, but I, I can see where it might take you know, four to six months with a committee to kind of really thoroughly look at and dig into um, if they're only going to meet uh, once or twice a month to be able to sure. to do that. Um, I, I would say whoever would want to be on it would probably be what you'd have. Um, I personally don't have any bandwidth to take up anything on any committee until I get through the end of June right now. <laughs> right in the thick of the weeds with um, trying to get our grand list rolled out and then I'll roll right into grievance. So, um, you know, whether it would take you that amount of time, I would certainly like, you know, would consider being involved in it, but, um, sure. you know, would not be able to do anything until July. Sure. Okay. So, it would be helpful if we asked Martin to and he tried to come up with a scope for us and he can run it by some folks in town or whatever, but as a uh, decades long bureaucrat, a committee for consent of a committee without real clear direction is not going to go particularly well. And so I think it would be helpful. And I don't think we should be shirking our responsibility and asking them what should be. So I think we should give direction to the committee since it is town property. So my suggestion is maybe next meeting or whatever, if you could think about it and run it by a couple folks and we can talk about it. Sure. Absolutely. I'd be glad to. So let me see if I understood. So you're just talking about putting a scope together of what the committee for the responsibility. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
And I think at that point, we can also brainstorm uh, uh, membership of the committee and how we would work, how we represent ourselves as well as the um, cross section of the community and work hard on this. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, and, and possibly a planning commission member because there's some overlap. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> Okay, any other question or thoughts on the idea of the committee to look at the schoolhouse in the department? Okay, we are moving on. Um, next item is rules of procedures. Rules of procedures. Uh, this is a document that the select board adopted a year ago for the first time as uh, we had no. Um, Operating agreement, so, um, and um, so uh, um, in our packets, uh, there are um, both the uh, the rules and procedure that we embraced last year and we signed. Um, in the three side of the year, as well as uh, Jim has presented uh, a few um, proposed changes uh, to those. So uh, I don't know my procedure to know whether or not we should discuss the changes first or ask for a motion to adopt the rules and procedures. I think it might be helpful if Jim went over his. Proposed amendments. Okay. Yeah. So, so I think you have a page that shows, you know, the BLCC boiler with paragraph as well as our current paragraph, which is very close to the same. And then the proposed paragraph, which really is the second half of that proposal that's the change, right? And what the the change is designed to do uh, really two things. One is to have us kind of discuss what's going to be on the next agenda at this meeting, right? So at the end of this meeting, we talk about future agenda items, we brainstorm, and we have some ideas of maybe what the next agenda is looking like. Now, two weeks go by, and ultimately, you know, Martin and Phil will figure out what the agenda is going to be for the next meeting, and so shares discretion. Um, the last piece of that paragraph is really to catch the occasional thing that comes up where you know, something comes up before the agenda is published. It feels like an important topic. It's raised with a select board, and the wording there is of two or more members of the body feel strongly that it should be added for that next meeting. We should add it. So it's really change. So, okay, one or two questions. Um, we also have changes in the second sentence. Um, um, I think it's from an email, right? Um, yeah. Are, are we getting ourselves in trouble if we're basically saying we're going to send an email to the entire member of the board? To my, my understanding, well, first of all, uh, residents can send emails before, or that's just correspondence. Right? We shouldn't have discussions about you know, requests or anything outside of the meeting. You know, so somebody says, you know, we want to tear down our apartments, well, we shouldn't be debating that by email. We should come to the meeting. Right? Um, but the residents can reject us. The second thing is the one thing that we I believe that we can work on via email outside an open meeting. Is the agenda. You are allowed to work on the agenda for the next meeting outside of the meeting. We did look at tonight's agenda and um, was realizing it's fairly dynamic that uh, it wasn't until earlier in the week that some of the items we knew could be on the agenda were, um, were carried over. So um, I understand the concept, and I, I like the concept of uh, uh, 
was, was suggesting at the end of the meeting what, what, what was coming. But I, I mean, it can't be a firm agenda. It's just a discussion. Right? The firm agenda has to be done closely with the pressure. Yeah. Okay, so my question still stands on my colleagues. How do we um, proceed? Um, do we vote on this change and then vote on be it voted on and discussed? Uh, yeah. The motion passed. So, so you're suggesting a motion to make a motion make to a accept the change and, and then, then a motion to pass it yeah. or not. You know, so yeah, to, or open up three of those questions. Okay, well, that's where I'm a, a motion then to, yes. to discuss um, and approve or disprove the changes to the agenda. Um, Okay, I have one under D, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so let me uh, see if I can word that. that so section D, okay. So I make a motion that we amend section D agendas, item one, to include the submitted text that allows the select board to discuss next meeting's agenda at the current meeting and you know add agenda items of two or more board members to I'll second the motion. So we have on the table for the section. Yeah. Right? And then we can proceed from there. Okay, we'll say aye. So, Jim, starting with the second sentence, four, so what are you trying to get there that's already in the existing policy regarding those of which to be added to? So, yeah, so they can only contact the town manager by email. So, they, so you have now only yeah, email. Yeah. What I was trying to do is carry forward that sentence from the way it exists today, right? And just make it known that email is the way to contact the time manager. So the sentence is already there. So that, right, but you're limiting it on email. So what if someone doesn't have email? Yeah, uh, my concern too. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. That's, we can take that, those two words out. Oh, yeah. You'd be actually removing the phrase. Yeah. Because if you remove the email and copy, you can't copy the board because there's no email. <laughs> I mean, what do people want to do to it? I would like to say people normally contact and do the email if they want something related to the job. There, uh, we do a lot of lost tax property tax bills, and we're emailing property tax bills all the time. And I don't know if it's going to the phone, an iPod, a computer, a laptop. Who knows where it's going? So I, I think as far as the email goes, I most people have an email. I believe they have a cell phone. Well, we can say email or mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Or so they can fax it to us. So let, let's just play this out. So I contact the town manager and to say I want to be on the board and then I'm copied. Then the board is copied. And the town manager says, Jenna's really busy, can't have it this meeting. But the board manager say, no, 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 I want it on this meeting. What's, what's going on there? I mean, if, if the employee, yeah, but this is what is, this is the catch right? So normally you schedule it, you get to it, right? It's a topic, you get to it, you get to it, right? It may not be the most, right? You've got to balance the needs of it. But it's a topic that board members in general feel strongly about that it needs to be discussed because it's time sensitive. You know, that's what this is meant to catch, not, not just kind of the everyday stuff. So. So you need, but you need two board. He wants two board. I get it. I'm not even down there. Oh, okay. Sorry. 
Because the next sentence then says the agenda for the next meeting shall be discussed and drafted at the end of each meeting. It, I get a sense of mistrust between the board and management. Is it just seems as though if we're going to discuss future agenda items at the end of each meeting, why do we then have to be copied during an interim time? when it would be up to the town manager and the chair, because that's one of the few and only duties the chair has. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I guess I don't get it. Right, so I guess the issue is that there, are, there are occasional issues, right, or there have been occasional issues. So again, this is not 99%, this is 1%, right? Where board members have felt strongly that an item should get onto the agenda. Uh, and it's been late, right? It's been you know, a few days before. Um, and you know, we didn't have any process to make that happen. So this is trying to plug that hole. Right? Um, I, I honestly don't see this happening a lot, but it's a tool to make us kind of more collaborative when something arises. Okay. And as I said at the last meeting, I'm going to pose the two or more. I disagree with that. I don't like it. For four reasons. Yeah, the last one. No, uh, what, what was it? What bothers you about it? I, I don't like emailing going on amongst board members in that. I think it should be more an open session. So you already had something in the, in the top where you say you can contact people, contact the town manager. Yeah. And then on top of it, it just, to me, feels like, and I think you used the past tense, in the past, board members were not feeling as though they were being heard by the administration. In my short time being on the board, I feel as though that isn't occurring. And two, I don't find it to be particularly collegial when you have to do that. I feel like, we're setting ourselves up to have conflict with the administration. Tom, I also read that second sentence that uh, those who wish to be added to the, to the meeting as a person who wants to be added to the meeting, not the agenda. Uh, someone wants to come in to discuss the matter. Uh, is that your intent? That's how it was written. That's their wording, too. But there was a okay. version of it's how it's written. Okay. It's, 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 it's really a little bit after that sentence. So, what? Yeah, like it's you said, the. Yeah. But the second part of the board was different. Okay, that's what's different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other discussion? Well, yeah, I understand Tom's I mean, and I think you're right in that we've had success. This board's had success working through the job. This has been a problem, though. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, past results are not indicated, indicated of future performance, right? So I think it protects future boards. If, you know, if two members of the board feel strongly about something, they can't get shut out. <laughs> Okay. Back to the second sentence. Those who wish to be asked, why, without knowing, so uh, Jimmy Smith says, I don't want to be added to the agenda. Well, what does Jimmy want to do with the well, agenda? That, and what's the difference between Jimmy Smith doing that and yeah. having public comment? That's PLC text. It's already well, the procedure. That's, that's not you know, the email portion. I, I mean, if there's a rationale for why Jimmy wants to be, I'd be more comfortable, but just as, you know, yeah. Jimmy likes talking meetings. I, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Well, again, it's great discussion for the share with that one. Mm -hmm. So I will share with you. Mm -hmm. so, in the, fir the first three sentences of real. What we already have to. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? 
I'm sorry. Are we allowed to to say? Um, all in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. All against say nay. Yeah. Nay. Nay. The nays have it. So let's go on to the documents. The rules of procedures for municipal boards and rules and conditions. Uh, I need uh, a motion to accept. I'll make a motion to accept the rules of procedure for municipal boards. Can you send questions to the town department? All in favor say aye. Any discussion? If things change, I think it's our responsibility then to change our rules of procedure yeah. so that we can do what is what's best for the town. And if things aren't working, then you know we we need to make those make those changes. So yeah. okay. Uh, Mark, we need a, a clear copy of uh, the meeting here at the next meeting to sign. Sure. Uh, sure. And, uh, and, uh, okay. I will make a copy. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, policing and department. Um, uh, here's the next item. Um, Martin, do you want to update the board on um, what we're hoping to do? Sure. Uh, Lieutenant O'Donnell is on vacation for two weeks, but he's getting a contract together. Um, we did the contract for 40 hours because it's really. Is that 40 hours a month? A month. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. It's 40 hours a month. So, but why not do the six? We know they're not going to meet. We know we'll have money left over. Yeah. Right. But if they get to a point where they do have to, he said he would we can go up to 60, but if we do it at 40, because we're coming into the summer months. Um, we're gonna meet with the town manager in Windsor and see where they look at for a contract and maybe a mixture between the two. We might be able to put something together so we can get to that 60 hours. Or a mixture of the third entity. Or the third entity with Brian Palmer, with the, with the uh, Windsor County Sheriff. If we can get all three and we can get to the 60 hours, that, that's the ultimate goal. Yeah. But at this point, I'd like to get a contract in place. Yeah, I agree. The, yeah we had agreed to go after that contract at, uh, at the last meeting. Yeah. Uh, so I should have it in hand hopefully next week. I'll get it signed and get it right back. So July 1st, we will have a contract with the Vermont State Police. We're in hopes to add maybe some more hours from the other two viable. Right. And, and just up, so it was 60 a month now, it's 40. Correct. But, the board doesn't think that we should just keep it at 60. Too much. Um, I should have always said 60. Um, I'll email him. I can fix it to 60 because he hasn't done the contract yet. So I'll send an email so when he gets back from vacation, it'll be the most current email. We, you know, uh, we, we can pick whatever number we want. For. We know we're going to have. Right. right. Now we're going to have more Yeah. Yeah, but that does not affect our budget for it. And then right. realistically, right. if these two can pick up extra, they're probably going to be honest. more than happy yes. to say, okay. Yes. And yep. they're going to push the Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. It just leaves the door open if somehow they recruit higher and then somebody that wants to take on the work. But yeah. The hours of the day. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm always smiling that. because we're. I will fix that. Yeah. Okay. Um, in addition, uh, we talked about the strategy of um, both the town wide meeting at, at, as well as creating a committee 
Um, and my colleague, Mr. Kennedy, sort of uh, had me on my toes because what I would like the committee to be doing um, is to explore um, the, the requirements for the town for safety and policing. And it's so strongly that uh, we, we have to do that. We have to um, um, take a look at the past work that was done before my time, so seven or eight years ago, um, before, when they looked at state police contracting, I believe, Windsor. Um, but we did take out information uh, and, and use that information to go to a community wide meeting to, to uh, engage the entire community in discussion of what policing and safety is. Um, um, what, uh, so, what I'd like to tonight is to sort of talk a little bit amongst ourselves about how to form that committee. Um, and uh, I, I've already been thinking of resources for that group to have professional people come in to talk to the group um, to, to assist them. Um, um, Just this too, we don't know. I think I got it. I'm not 100 sure, but I think I got it. Okay, is there a raised hand? Or is uh, there no a raised hand. hand? Okay. Um, before we go on, I should look at about how to do it. Hi. Would you mute yourself, please? Yeah. Can you guys get that to mute? Not everyone is muted. No, I can't. Everyone muted. Everyone's muted. Right, they're they're muted. Okay, I'll mute now. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. You were saying about policing? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, just a general discussion about our reading. This is an agreeable approach to take and um, thoughts on and what's going on with thoughts about the community structure. But I mean, I think it's fine. Committee is fine. Um, you could do a committee, or you know, I guess you could have to do public hearings as well. Would you? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by a public hearing. Um, I mean, if you're going to you have a committee start with school list, but I think you'd want to open it up to get more input from the public at some point. Correct, right? Correct. Or you yes. could just do public hearings with other committees. So either one would be fun. Um, it's just, I guess, would one be quicker or more effective than that? I thought we were going to have a short-term and a long-term strategy. So we we're going to have a long-term strategy of what we wanted and what we considered to be policing. And then our shorter term strategy was going to try to have supplemental assistance right. on a short term basis, whether it's six months, whatever it is. And we were going to do that, but that most likely would not be the type of engagement that we would have on the longer term because Correct. we need to work. And Tom, I believe we actually started on that. The first portion of the short term strategy okay. by, by agreeing to go with the state police uh, and then filling in. Uh, and until we get to a little more legwork and background, um, we, we need more information to bring to the board. And we're, I think next week we're, we're on track to sort of get some more of that information. So, so I just want to make sure when you're interviewing the parties, so it's a equal playing field is we're asking the same questions. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm interested in, for instance, certification of who's going to be doing the patrolling, those types of things. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's the list we should put together yeah. before we go out like the scoping. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. We're certainly in the gathering that that case we're having done that. Um, but, um, 
So we're pleased to the long term. It's the word of the So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I got <laughs> Every time I hear the word committee, I just think of it's a death knell for something. Uh, thing we have, you've got to find out where people are, people want, what ways it. And that will certainly end up being the, you know, it's kind of like our little project out here. The majority wanted it, so, and you want to have different opinions, certainly. Uh, uh, what's best for the majority? Even those of us that live out in the woods. Mandy, so. um, your thoughts? I agree. I think that the formal committee to kind of formulate what the long term plan is for the town, what would be best for the town, whether it's you know, the sheriff's county, you know, Windsor, or some other. Um, I don't know. I think that makes sense. Yeah. And we publicly have said before, depending upon the length of that requirements list, um, up goes the cost of its own list. So, um, um, I have been uh, thinking of traditional two select board members. Um, um, and I have some ideas of other people, some community, community members that approach me, ask them to be involved. Um, and I know Mandy has a background and interest in this, so I'm wondering if we could turn to her to chair of the board. Yeah. Um, 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 other thoughts on structure? If there are none, then Mandy and I can chat and, we, and we'll come back to you with a plan um, uh, with both a little bit of, uh, much like we handled the Rose Committee to sort of say how long we're going to meet, uh, what, what, what our scope document was, and um, suggested membership. So, so I don't want to throw anything in the bus, but don't, doesn't Tom also have experience with investigating regional solutions? Man, he will do a great job. This is talking about the longer, long term. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I mean, yeah, we, we don't have to decide today. It's just something to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll cheer on a little bit, Mandy, and, and sort of. I think Tom was said yes, but I'm not sure. I think I did hear a reluctant yes. I don't get any whites. Okay. Um, Brian, did you want to add anything? We have this, we've had a general discussion that we are, how uh, we are going to sort of get a requirements this going. You've heard us talk about our the intro piece, but that's about all we know right now. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to add anything. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it sounds like you have a, a plan. It doesn't, I don't know what plus adding anything is going to help with that. Um, I think we've had discussions at length about what we can offer immediately interesting in filling that void um, for you know providing 80 hours of service for when you're paying 64, but um, it doesn't seem like that's been all that fruitful. So I'm just gonna just sit back and let you guys figure out what your, your goals and stuff are and, and we'll stay in touch. It's okay. Thank you. Any other points on this? Uh, going on to new business, uh, Summer Falls Ecological Assessment. I believe we have. Hello, my name is David Sleeper. I'm a member of the Conservation Commission and I'm co chair with Guy Crosby of the, of the commission's uh, work on the Summer Falls recreation area. The, the, the select board uh, approved a really wonderful management plan for Summer Falls. It's aspirational. It, it thinks of the future. It's figuring out ways to increase 
the, the educational uses of the falls, the, all the incredible recreation, the historical things happening at the falls. But it is it's it's aspirational and it's just a plan. You know, it's a it's a ten page piece of paper. So we've been working on the conservation commission on how to implement the plan, knowing that we don't have a lot of money, um, knowing that things take time, and we've come up with a with a sort of three phases for doing that. And phase one, and that's really what we're going to talk about tonight very quickly, but phase one involves uh, doing assessments of the property, especially natural resources and forestry assessments, doing trail mapping and planning, getting all this work done so that we can move to phase two. And this is when we actually start bringing tools into the woods and we start building trails, uh, taking out trees uh, and making trails accessible if, if possible working with working with experts to do that and then that would lead to phase three and this is don't worry about it everybody it's further down the line because this this is when we would start looking at capital improvements uh improvements to the roads improvements to the parking areas the picnic areas do we need a new entrance way do we need a new gate should the should the, the property be open year round if if we're trying to encourage things like cross country skiing and and other other winter activities uh, thing, things like that that's all in the future we can't do anything until we get phase one done and uh, and we're looking at three things as phase one and we hope we can get them done pretty quickly one is uh, an ecological assessment by the Vermont Center for Eco Studies. And I think you have a description of what that ecological assessment would be. Uh, and then the, the second day, after we get this in hand and figure out what's on the property, what are the, what, what are the important natural areas, what are the things we need to protect, uh, then we would actually start consulting with professionals who know something about building trails. And we've had some discussions already with the Upper Valley Trails Alliance who have worked with lots of organizations on building really terrific trails. And then third, in both of those things, the ecological assessment and the, and the trail planning and mapping would, would give us with a lot, uh, uh, some additional information that could be put on an interactive GIS map that's already been created by Gary Trager. And so at the end of this phase one process, we will have a or sort of a living, breathing map of Sumner Falls where we can see what's there in terms of the ecology, where trails should go, what's the, there's amazing things already on that map and we'll make it available to the public. So what we would like the select board to consider tonight is one, just, just to approve or at least hear our discussion about what we mean by this phase one plan. And the, which again is the, the assessments, the mapping, and the, uh, the assessments and the mapping and the planning, things like that. And two, we would like to get the folks at Vermont Center for Eco Studies working as soon as possible and they are they're ready to do the work we we do have a a proposal from them it's a it's a proposal that would cost two thousand seven hundred dollars we have successfully raised the money from four citizens to cover the entire two thousand seven hundred dollars but we do need a contract in place and i would like to uh, start working with uh, vermont center for eco studies and, and martin on putting that that contract together so that we can discuss uh, if you like what this the vce study would be it's uh but basically it's it does some very interesting things it's a review of the significant biodiversity areas at the falls and when we we all we all know what vernal pools are, but we don't know where where wildlife trails are in the area. We don't we don't know what the plants uh, where the plant communities are and tree communities. We don't know which of the communities, except for a few, are actually endangered species and should be should be really protected and then eventually singled out and talked about in the future. So so Vermont Center for Eco Studies, which has done this this sort of work many times would review existing information they can get from from state and other records they would visit the property they would walk the property 
uh, see what we've gathered in the past and just so they can get all this information together. We also ask them to come up with a plan for working with volunteers. These, these days, volunteers use all sorts of, uh, they can use their iPhones and to do these ecological assessments going out, you know, out on the property. And these could be terrific educational events, but they're also ways to figure out what's there when you when you can get people there. I know I know Rob Andrig has done these has done these before. So they want to talk about that. And we also have some ideas about where some of the trails might go based on some of the historical records that we've discovered, especially the Gary's discovered using his his satellite imagery there there's some old historic roads on the property and we want to we're thinking boy this would be a great trip this would be terrific but we need to hear what the the conservation biologists say about that or the, and then one final thing is and and it, again it's not going to cost us anything but we've been in discussions with the the two county foresters and they are are eager and willing to work with us and there's no charge for this to do a, a forest management plan based on all this other stuff that's coming together. So we can decide, we can look, they can look at the health of the forest and they can help us decide what, what, what tree species are here and how can we protect them? Or do any species need to be removed? Uh, as we look at our emerald ash borer coming in, does it make sense to take trees down now for safety reasons or because this is where we might want to put expand parking lots or put the trails like that? So. That's it in a, in a nutshell. We would love for the select board to say, yes, go ahead and do this contract with Vermont Center for Eco Studies. Again, it is, it is the cost of that is completely covered at this point. Um, and it, but we would love to get going as soon as we can. So what's the acreage of the study? Uh, help me, Bob, is it the acreage of Sumner Falls? I think it's 55 acres. Yeah, 55 acres. It, it's, if you've been there, it's just, it's this amazing piece of property because it's very long and thin. Right. And as you just just as you enter in the road, there's some terrific woodland areas you can walk in. As you get down toward the river and then along the river, it just goes straight up. Okay. Uh, Gary and I took that. We had one of his satellite thing. You took that. There's no trail. We went straight up, and it, we almost lost David during that that trip. But it's uh, but there really are some amazing things. And thinking of the future, there are some things that are a little more complicated that we want to look at. The road that goes to the, the gravel pit is actually a, a road that is owned by the town. And so at some point, it might be interesting, and maybe it's just starting off in the winter months, to have access to that road so we can, again, have further access to the property. That's, again, all in the future. We'd like to get all our ducks in order and, and start with uh, the Vermont Center for Eco Studies uh, proposal and get them working on it. So who's the contract with? Is it with the, the town or the, con or the conservation division? It would be with the town, isn't that correct? Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, uh, Tom, uh, Martin has already been discussing some of the nuances here with the conservation commissions. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, uh, especially since there are gifts involved, which are pretty exciting, um, um, and, and how that would be handled. We think we figured out a relatively easy way to do that, and we've already talked to VCE about this. The four people who will cover the cost would actually make a donation to the Vermont Center for Eco Studies, and it would be earmarked for this specific project. Okay. So that way the funds don't have to flow through the town and yeah. and uh, we, we don't have to deal with the tax implications for donors and things like that. So so this is, would be pretty easy. Okay. So just a quick question on the funding. Is it, we're obviously going to look at standard a little differently. Is the entire 2700 coming from this or some of it coming out of the operation budget for the conservation commission? The entire $2,700 would come out Okay. And the future work, would, which would happen in phase one, would come out of the, uh, the budget, some from the budget, some from future gifts, and, and also utilizing the conservation fund as a way to just borrow money to get started, and then we would intend to pay back the fund. So that's all we're thinking about right now is, and the total cost for phase one is, three, we're thinking right now is about $3,900. And again, that would be, we're not asking you to approve anything now, but that would be covered with gifts, 
uh, some money from the budget and, uh, and utilizing the conservation fund as a funding mechanism. So let's make a motion that we allow the conservation commission to move forward with their uh, ecological assessment of some of the false property subject to approval by the Yakin Town Manager. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Uh, it's been very exciting to, uh, to be thinking about three phases and getting going on, the, on this one. Well, so, thank uh, you very much. It will be a, it'll be a fun project. Yeah, it will be. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And if you want to go to the next one, I'll just be going to the next one. Okay, now, much less exciting. I am the review of the personnel policy. I'm not sure what new changes are. Um, I. Um, I think we're all in agreement that uh, we want to address um, our personnel policy. There's no question about it in my mind. Um, and the real question would be uh, how to proceed. Um, I, I failed to put something out tonight. I did go to um, uh, the attorney that we're working with right now, John Fleisch, and he returned an estimate of what uh, he, he imagined it would cost to look, look at what we have and just get feedback to research a little bit or to a third one, which is why got an entirely new one based on our requirements. Um, uh, I think the highest bid was thirty thousand dollars. So we're not we're not talking about so we're not we, we are not talking about a lot of money there. Um, so I as a discussion point tonight, uh, what are people's thoughts about how to proceed with this? Um, well, I think you're whatever we do. There has to be some type of legal review, whether it's PLCT or John. So I don't know if they can that. Um, just kind of the things that are in my head in terms of what we should be looking at. Maybe if we had this documented, it could have been helpful in the past. Is you know, simply like an escalation process. Yeah. You know, I think there's an escalation process to the select board if there's a termination. That's well documented in the policy. Correct. There's not an escalation process. If there are other employee relationship issues or conduct issues, um, and there probably should be, then it should probably be something like go to your manager. Your manager is not able to fulfill his duties. To you. Go to your manager's manager, go to the you know, kind of, you know, what is the process best for you? Um, I you know, certainly would want to add the a requirement of having uh, performance reviews on a regular basis, yeah. which, which um, I think we're all surprised that they work. You know, um, um, so, so maybe as a first step, if uh, <clears throat> the attorney could just outline where he sees weaknesses in the existing policy, just highlight, highlight those, okay. and then, um, then we can go from there. No, the, the reason other issues. So I read through it recently and I thought, well, it's going to be a little bit of work to figure this out. Um, but the policy, the way it's stated now, only applies to employed staff, not elected staff. Uh, and there are some things in that policy that clearly do apply to elected staff, like vacation time and benefits, things like that. So maybe that we need to kind of rewrite the policy to include both in the appropriate sections. You know, one section that would not apply to elected staff is the termination process, all right? Mm -hmm. um, but some of the other sections do absolutely apply. Uh, in prior communications with the LCT, 
you know, we can enforce a code of conduct with all staff, right? Whether you're elected or, you know, employed. Um, and we can do that in exchange for benefits, basically. Um, so there are right, so so there's a difference between a code of conduct and personal policy. Yeah, I'm not uh, sure. The code of conduct is, is embedded in the personal policy. Right. Uh, but I think elected officials would have to use a code of conduct. Um, I would imagine. You'd have to either adapt the policy or have a separate policy. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Yeah. The policies are not good. Yeah. Yeah. And there's lots of models out there. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, I would think that if he does this, there must be some sort of model for other people. Really it has. Pretty yeah. standard, right? That it would include the elected versus appointed. Well, the is a little bit simpler. Um, but they, they're but they accustomed to it. Right. But also, we need to recognize there's, there can be recent key, uh, court decisions. This sort of changed things. I know there have been some recent court decisions regarding um, town administrators and town members. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it'd be a good idea. Okay. So, are we in favor of um, my approaching the attorney with the current document to sort of say where? I think that's a great first well, step. Well, yeah. the holes. You know, this, you know, so, um, Happy to just research whatever the LCT has for boiler codes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll do the same, James. So we can be safe on that one. Um, okay. Um, okay. Martin, can you send a copy to everyone? I'm okay. glad to. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. I'm going to send it tomorrow morning. Isn't it available on the website? No. 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 Okay, um, are we good on um, the personnel policy? Yeah, so, so I think, I think we don't have to take an action. We just don't agree with what we need to write. Yep. We need to work on that. Okay, moving on to the capital program plan. Um, so Jim, this is an item that you've been wanting to discuss. Yeah, I, I drafted um, a spreadsheet a while back, also in the summer time frame, kind of outlines you know, the known projects, right? Mm -hmm. And our known you know, funding, right? Um, but then you also have your unknown funding, which is grants, you know, additional bonds to buy for Zico. And you, you get a kind of map of projects that have to get done with the funding sources, right? And kind of a both timeline of when they would need to get done. Um, I, I think the first pass of that might be, you know, like Martin and Bill, myself, who, who look at it and brainstorm based on what we know today, right? Um, and we can present that. Any, any, any plan put together is not cast in stone for the next five years. It's going to be variable, but I think we need to know, right? We need to know. You know, when do we have to replace the town highway? Yeah. We need a you know, rough cost estimate. We need a rough idea. Is it other available funds to do it, or are we going to need a bond? Right. Okay. Um, okay. During the, our, our budget review planning phase, um, Mr. Armisen had a series of capital budget presentations. Yeah. How, how, what, how does what you're thinking differ from, from what those documents are? Um, that's more of a list, right? And this would be more of a grid that said, all right, this project's going to get done in 2025. The funding sources list. Right. Mm -hmm. This project's going to get done. It's more comparable to the yeah. presentation that um, the fire chief gave. So, exactly. Like, so, so if you, you look at the fire department purchasing plan and funding plan right. for equipment, it's spread out over a long period of time yeah. all the all the way there. Right. Right. So okay. And again, this is the yeah, it's a brainstorming session, it's a first draft, so we can present something to the board that this has been mm -hmm. somewhat thought through so we have an idea of you know you know how much money do we have, how much do we need to know more about this thing. Right. Um, and you've targeted the Highway, shouldn't we be 
maybe just start there, but we should be more global, just thinking about David Ball and the yeah, center. Yeah, yeah, we should have a much Yeah, right. But just like, you know, in terms of where does where the, the data come from, I think right now it's Bill Martin. So, you know, the, the engineers are looking at data and all of that stuff. Right, we have the two studies going on, one for the direct side and one for here. We have to still put together a request for a proposal or a request for whatever that is for a study or a part of which you wrote it. that part. So, so let's just create a framework for us so we understand what has to be done with each other. We have a little reading thing we would update every day. Martin, your reaction? I'm okay with it. I think it's a great idea. It gives us more thought of what's what's coming down, what we know we're going to have to replace or what we're going to have to do yeah. instead of a surprise, because the surprise is awful hard to come up with the money. Right. Yeah. Any other questions? There's also a lot of. Through the agency of commerce municipal planning grants, and you can go through capital budget programming through that as well. If you wanted to get a little more money into it, and maybe hire someone to help you with it. So that's an eligible to that's an eligible activity. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like you said, we can let you point, and if we hit a stumbling block, that'd be a great resource to to move it forward. What was that? The next one. This look. So the agency of commerce and municipal planning grant program, I mean, you know, traditionally it's been town plans and zoning bylaws. I believe you, I think it's early fall, you apply. And the only prerequisite is you have to have an approved town plan. Which we have. Okay. Good conversation. Thank you. Let's go on to um, uh, back to town manager update. Um, Martin, it's yours. All right. Uh, I've been in contact with uh, Kevin O'Toole, who has been kind enough to do one more year for tax sales. He sent me a commitment letter to sign to move forward and a 40 page document to read and understand the, the proper process, which I was kind of familiar with, but this gave me the the, the down and dirty of it. Um, I'm going to sign it and send it back to him tomorrow. I have six properties that I have in. So I'm hoping late July, early August, we will have a really the habitat sale or everybody will pay in full at the time. Um, yes, Jim? Yeah, I know. Uh, we can't predict. You have six now. Obviously, we'd like to like for the folks to come out and settle. But um, right. and last year we started eighteen and ended up at one. one. So the odds are have been the year before we started at twenty two and ended up at one. Yeah, the year before that we had that. Yes, we did. Yeah, that was the first year. We had almost twenty five. I think that year. Okay. So it's really come down. Thank you. So, but yeah, the delinquencies primarily this year, 2023, that they go back. Um, one, I have three two years and three one year. It, and the reason I went after one for the one year is over four thousand dollars. Okay. In total, got multiple notices. And oh, every month I send out a letter every month to them. <laughs> and and the ones that come back, I do a lot of research to find an address. You can ask Stacy. I'm always digging for addresses or phone numbers and we'll get them cut. Out of the six, uh, how many of those? Out of, out of the six, how many of you unclear the address? No, I have really, yeah. I always find the address. Okay. No, I, anything that comes back, we, we get the address and send it right back out. It usually doesn't come back. And the notices say that if you don't pay, it's a yep. problem. They say their house is going up for tax sale. It specifically states that. Um, I spoke with Chris Bump of Vermont Trans District about the North Harlem Bridges. The back bridge is is the um, is over 100 or close to 100 years old. The front bridge is 25 years old. Um, all wooden bridges in the state of Vermont for statue are eight tons. That's all that's allowed. And we have ours posted at 10,000 pounds. We do have one at the intersection. I went and checked that out. We have one at the intersection in front of each bridge. We have to sign 10,000 pounds. 
Um, the select board does have the right to raise that limit. The problem is if you raise that limit, the bridge deteriorates faster. <laughs> so that's so 16,000 pounds is the statutory limit for Vermont for the type of bridge. That's correct. That's to the town. Correct. I drove over the Queechee Bridge and went over to visit Brandon uh, the other day, and theirs is posted at 24,000 pounds. It's only 12 ton, and they have a cement, and they have a cement uh, floor. Well, but, but that is, uh, the is that is the reason we drew the bar and built over it. Right. Yes. So that's why their bridge is at 24,000 pounds or 12 ton. Um, so just, just an FYI. Yeah. Three corners intersection. Oh, sorry. Sure. So the bridge itself was looked at in like 1995. His first point was the second bridge is not original. Okay. Uh, back then, I think, if I'm trying to do this from memory, they thought it could hold 14,000 pounds. But they also recommended the town and engineer evaluation be done on trusses, which, as far as I know, 30 years later was never done. Um, they believe the bridge could be, you know, the trusses could be made to hold up to 40,000 pounds. So we've got this kind of issue on Mill Street where you can't get an influence over that bridge right now. If you knew the true weight limit, right, and if the weight limit was the Vermont maximum, you can get an influence over the bridge. So that's kind of, kind of a Mill Street residence issue, right, that they've, they've talked as well in the past. So I guess the real question is, you know, how do we find out the real number? And when is the bridge going to get work done by, by the trans? Because it was supposed to be coming up, it was supposed to be programmed, I think, up in the next. Uh, Mr. Bob says he thinks they're, work, they're supposed to look at it this year, for sure. Um, so I'm helping it work. There are two bridges. One is the first one, is one is and one is not. We're correct. Yeah. So which is which? The back one is historic. The front one is the north one. The north one is historic. Yeah. The front one was only 25 years old. Okay. Um, which one are you? Called the back one. The 100 year old okay. bridge that was like 150 year old bridge. Yeah. Right. 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 So, okay. and at what point does it become historic? Is that years? In, what's the point? Yeah. 50 years. Thank you. <laughs> so, full disclosure, district manager for the Great Oak Valley Solid Waste District, and we're providing access over our property mm -hmm. onto Quarry Road, which is a private road. <laughs> and we have been cooperating with the town, but I spoke to Martin about this last week both Twin States and Gravel in the district don't really want to see this be a permanent solution. Uh, and secondly, I think for safety of the residents on that side, other side of the bridges, we really need to do something. So I spoke with someone last week, um, and I gave Martin the name of another person, instructors in Montpelier to look at it, but I hate to say this, it may come to a point where we remove the historic bridge. We have to, we can't make it, but we need to raise a limit on that bridge. Or the town should consider taking over Quarry Road to that point and then upgrade that trail. And James, you know, that's not, you know, but right now it's not great. It's not a great option. No, and, and even at 16,000 pounds, you're not going to put a paint truck to pull that bridge. No, no, it won't go over. Um, so, so, are we talking, uh, if we're looking for someone again to clarify, are we just looking at that historic bridge on the north side, or are we actually looking, there's weight limits on both bridges? Um, so, yeah, the, yes. the, the weight limits, where those came from? Is on third as well. No, Mark said it earlier. It's state statute. State statute, six tons. Eight tons. Eight tons. Eight tons. State statute is eight tons. Eight tons. These are close to the five. Right. Right. We, we post them down a little bit yeah. less than. If you, yeah, in reading the 95 report, it seems like there was a 
five ton sign at the end of the road that somebody took and put on the bridge. Okay, well, so I'll, 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 I'll see if I can get Mr. Bunch to spend some time with me. So the email I sent, I think, that I thought I could share with you as well, Tom, may have a person's name from structures that I would call them. I would call them. And I'll see if Mr. Bunch will spend some time with me so I can dig deep into this. And I think we need to try to be creative. But yeah. Keep the bridges if we can, but also get some money. So the 95 report, I think the option is there, right? That must yeah. replace the one that's there. I thought Dave was doing building. something last when we were negotiating. I thought he was having some study done. Well, the, there was so assessment. There's, there's, an, there's an inspection of the, um, of the rear bridge. Okay. There's an inspection that year. Yeah, it's year. supposed to be this summer. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be this summer. But let me let me get hold of Mr. Bunks if you kind of give me some time and I'll schedule an appointment and keep you guys posted. But, but, but let me send the two of you the email because the name is in the other email. Maybe the person that comes with me. Okay. Maybe I can walk. Is that what the other trans person? Yeah. Um, okay. So I know we were contacted. So. Um, yeah. Uh, well, Tom, if you're at another <coughs> engineering firm, that would, you might be able to do a study as well. No, um, I just have been uh, talking with folks I know at VTrans. I've worked with them for a long time. Okay. Just to see if we can have some other ideas. Because, it, again, it's just not a great yeah. situation. No. Yeah, and I, I'm... Um, <laughs> When I look at all the tourists taking pictures at the Bridge Covered Bridge, I don't think they realize they're, they're on a steel, some concrete. <laughs> yeah. um, but that was um, that was an efficient way to get that bridge rebuilt after the yeah. um, yeah. sure. Whereas if you look at the Castle Bridge, that took a year and a half, or two years, yeah. Yeah, longer. The Bridge that went out with Irene was a cement bridge with the water built over it, too. Yeah. <laughs> right. Which I think now. Yeah. Lots of money. Um, uh, three corners intersection. I reached out to Rita. She's been very, very gracious for the time. Uh, the question last meeting, the schedule for the project is sort of vague. Um, she came back. We, we've tried to ask not for more detail, but this version is all they're going to generate at this time. The other question has a meeting been scheduled to meet with the abutters? We have a meeting this Wednesday with the project. And once that's done, she will start scheduling a meeting with the abutters and with the, with the town. And the public meeting will come after the abutters meeting. <laughs> what signage will be done on the interstate for the project? She wasn't sure. She forwarded this to Chris Fox, and he has a jurisdiction on the interstate. And I haven't heard back from that either. <laughs> Um, KD Brook, KD Brook restoration is going to start this month. I put in the emails about what's going on, the three bridges that are going on next Monday at nine o'clock. We're meeting at KD Brook Trail to we'll walk and look at it. If you want to join us, please come on out. Thumbs up. Next Monday at nine a.m. So that may be eight. Uh, Vermont State contract, we've gone over. Uh, the alpha yearly report was completed on Tuesday. Um, it was part of the project, a task, because I wasn't the ultimate to do it, the ultimate signer. So it was a task. I started the Thursday before to get it going, but um, I believe her name was Sarah from Two Rivers. Was, Sarah, was Sarah, just, right? Sarah, yeah, she was just absolutely incredible. Her patience. Um, I signed the contract today for the pipe contract for paving Clay Hill. It'll come on this fall. It'll be pipe, as I said, uh, just a touch over two hundred and sixty thousand um, dollars. How long? Uh, I don't know. I'm wondering how far two hundred sixty goes nowadays. <laughs> Probably about six tenths of a mile. <laughs> <laughs> I believe there the goals to replace all pavement on that end. Well, so if yeah, off the hill. Hill. Oh, I don't think they're doing the hill. I think they're going, I think the way Bill talked, it was just above the hill. The hill means major repair. I think we should clarify that. Yes, yep, I will find out. Um, yeah. Hey, this is, this is all <laughs> this is a question. 
It's it's the budget. Budget. For fiscal 24 budget. Yes, that's correct. 280,000, I believe, is in the fiscal budget. Might be 260, but I think it's 280. I think we have that. And, and it came in at 262, 263. And that is all I have. I'm reminded that we can make that study of the Kuchi Road to happen within the next year. Yes, yeah, we're getting on that. Oh, I think I'm remiss. When we're going to executive session, Jim, would you do the um, evaluations first? I get them reversed on the. Yeah, we have to figure out the strategy here yeah, since we have two more topics to cover. All right. I have a motion to move into one, motion to move out, and then motion to move into the other. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Okay, so any correspondence? I had none. Okay. Uh, future agenda items. So we'll figure out just on the key work trails. Nothing the town has to do. There's no contract or anything. No, no, to get funding and took care of it. Then it's a question with taking out two stone bridges and replacing them. Yeah, cohorts. Three cohorts. We did have a presentation in the last year from. Yeah, the Operation National Resources Conservation. Yes, we did. Yeah. And you mentioned, or she mentioned, like, of others. So, so is anyone going to contact She them? said she's going to take care of them. Yes. Good. And they knew it was coming. The future kind of items. I'm not sure I know what the set schedule is for commission and committee updates. We should be all set with that. Yeah, so we had um, Rob, Jay, and Sarah here at one point in March, right? right? And I think the suggestion is that you know, we should have at least some schedule where we invite them in to do updates. Oh, okay, working on what that might be for us. Oh, okay. So I, I, was, I was thinking of appointments. Yeah. I was too. Are, so I'm inviting them to like, like every quarter or something like that. I'm not even too frequent. I'm just saying more of a year. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now I know what you're looking for. I'll put that in my schedule. Yeah. And then the motion to distribute money from the highway surplus to cover the overage for the three corners project that was discussed December and January before the RFP was put out. Um, so here, here's my understanding on this. So we, we we voted on moving forward with the NOTS proposal. Right? Um, we know that the bond is going to cover up to a certain point of this project. Correct. Right? And then we'll have to go to the Highway Reserve Fund to make a difference. I would say So in the research I've done, yeah, we have two VLCT orders. One that said you should definitely vote to distribute money from that fund. And another who said, who's on the finance side, said that it's a gray area. But I would recommend that we vote to distribute money from that fund. So I just wanted it on the radar. You know, I think there will come a time, it's not today, you know, it's when the bond money runs out, that we'll have some bills to pay, and we should take an action at that time to distribute whatever money is necessary. Can you make a motion now to do that? We probably could, but we don't know the number. It's, uh, it's, it's on future agenda. So. Oh, okay. So I think what we should be doing, Martin, is maybe then you know, with the boards, Consensus is presenting the budget the first project on a regular basis and say, here's the bond money, here's the bills we've paid so far, here's what we expect to come in. I can put that so, in. Yeah, yeah, so we just have a tracking mechanism to know mm -hmm. when we'll get to close. Right. Yeah. Well, we, after today's, it'll be $230,000. $230,000. Today's was one sixty eight, and we sent. Green Mountain Power 85. Like so another, like There's been some small VHP sales, but I didn't see it for those. Plus, we had already spent 100 grand or so. That's correct. Okay, sure. 
the future of that we're we're all on the same page that we as we enter into the intersection project will be very important for us to um, be aware of the fiscal or the project management sort of yeah. perspective mm -hmm. uh, and any delays is changes to okay so we have two executive sessions one to update um, the group on personnel issues and the second is to make a decision on the um, candidates to discuss the, uh, what decision we would like to make uh, on the candidates for the River Commission and now in the case of the mental so, um, am I correct in that? So, the bottom one. Well, yes, please. Yes, so, I'll so make a motion to move to executive session to discuss committee appointments pursuant to 1 VSA section 31383. I'll second it. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so we've exited executive session. Yes. And is there a motion? Yep, I will make a motion to appoint Dan Nelson to the well, Mount Assangatney subcommittee of the Connecticut River Joint Commission and Sarah Cohen Wood as alternate to the committee. I'm sorry, second. Second one. Okay. All in favor say aye. Please. Aye. 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 Good. Martin, would you let them know? Sure. Mm -hmm. And out of courtesy, just uh, CC Rob. I will. Absolutely. On that part. Yeah. Okay. Um, Because I'll make a motion that we move to executive session pursuant to 1 VSA 313A1F to discuss attorney-client communications. A second it. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 